Hi, I'm Dala, and today I'm gonna show you how to install one of these bad boys. Let's get started. Today I'm working on this ZE0 leaf, which is the earliest generation, this white interior with electric handbrake. Uh, I'm actually doing a battery upgrade on this one, ramping it up to 40 kilowatt hours. And um, this vehicle needs a can bridge in order to complete the upgrade. So I'm gonna show you step by step how to install it here under the cup holder. So the first thing is to disconnect the 12 volt battery. And before you do that, you should uh, close all doors and wait at least two minutes. Otherwise it will set some fault codes if you remove the 12 volt battery too soon. So yeah, I've done exactly that. So let's move inside the vehicle. So inside the car, start with removing the cup holders. This does not require any special tools, you simply pull up to remove it. Like so. Then there are some electrical connections inside that you have to disconnect. One. Two. Three. And four. And then just place it on the side. This will give you access to where you should actually place the can bridge. I like to put it here. It's quite a good protected place and easy to access in case you need to do any firmware updates later on. But yes, after this we can move on to removing the side panel that is here on the side. So to remove this panel you only need a screwdriver. There's a clip here that you simply unscrew and after it has been unscrewed you can pull it out. After that the piece will come out. Like so. Then with the same screwdriver there are a few clips here underneath. I can show you with the camera. So here is one and on the other side another one. After those are removed you can then pull down the plastic piece here in order to get some better access to behind the OBD2 port where we will pull the power from. There is also a nut here, a plastic one at the end, which you can simply unscrew with your hands. After that, the plastic piece comes down. Like so. Now we have better access to the OBD2 port. So here is where the actual splice onto the can will happen. This black cable that is here. So in order to better access this one, you can remove some carpet here. So I'm going to be placing back this plastic piece here and make a mark. So I know how much carpet I can safely remove without it showing. So yeah, let's do that. Be very careful when you're making the cut here, so you don't accidentally cut into this cable. So there, with some carpet removed, you now have much better access to this cable here. Now I will make an incision on the protective coating here. But be very careful when you do this, so you don't accidentally cut any wires. Okay. 
now with the outer sheathing removed, there is still some plastic tape around the cables, so very carefully remove this. It's a good idea to continue with this type of knife, but be very very careful. And now we have actually eyes on the price. So the CAN cabling is um, identified as this twisted pair. It is a uh, green and blue wire. So now that we have exposed this CAN wiring and you will then have to cut these two at the middle and here is where we will splice in the CAN bridge harness. Uh, sometimes you might not be so lucky as to find this, these two cables right at the front. So you might have to rotate the cable a bit in order to find the EV can. So yeah, now I'm gonna cut these wires. Now when I cut these wires, there's no going back. Now that the wires have been cut, I'm going to be stripping some of the insulation off to prepare the CAN wires to be soldered. You can also crimp the wires, but this is such a tight spot that it will be hard to get any tools in for crimping. I'm gonna be using this auto stripper in order to make life a bit easier. This is still a very tight spot. So, you're gonna have a hard time here. I didn't get enough on this one. You ideally want maybe one centimeter of stripping. If you're having trouble like me, you might have to try to pull out some more cable. This blue one went much better. This will be fine. But I'm still gonna work on this, this one a bit off camera. But yeah. This is what you want to accomplish on both sides. If you're having trouble with the auto stripper, you can also use something like this if you're really careful. As you can see now all the cables have been trimmed and we can now start by soldering some tiny amount of solder onto the cables to prepare them for attaching the Cambridge wire harness onto it. So now I'm gonna be pre-thinning the leads. Nice. So let's look at the wiring harness that comes with the CAN bridge. It's actually quite simple. It's only six wires. Uh, and you'll have to excuse me, my label maker ran out of labels, so it's just marked with uh, painter's tape this time. But yeah, so the CAN bridge actually only needs power, which is this red one. It should have 12 volt constant. Uh, then it is ground, which is this black cable. and. Then it's just two sets of CAN wires. It's one for the battery, labeled CAN1, and one for the vehicle, labeled CAN2. So now I'm gonna show you 
how to install this in the car. So now with the can wiring all prepared, I'm going to be snaking in this uh, wiring harness and I'm going to be feeding it in here and up into this compartment which is quite hard to do one-handed so I might I might be able to do it one-handed let's see let's do it like that and so so basically I just snaked it in there and now the connector is residing up here so do it with enough slack so that the can bridge can be placed somewhere here inside but we're only going to be doing a really short run for the can wiring as you can see the harness that comes with the can bridge is like really long to accommodate for all models but really we're going to be cutting it someplace here so that we can do the splice here so yeah i'm going to cut this to length okay so with the ground and positive a bit out of the way it's now easier to see where we actually want to make the cut so uh, the can wiring is labeled with uh, can 1 and can 2 so this um, can 2 is the one that will be going up and the can 1 will be going down Like so. Now that the cables have been cut to length, we can take the wire strippers and also pre thin both ends of this harness. Now I'm going to pre-thin these. And we are done. Now we can cut some shrink wrap. Your solder joints should look something like this. I'm going to be using a hot air gun to melt the shrink wrap. And this is what the end result looks like. Now I'm going to take some zip ties to tidy this up a bit. Cut 
So the zip ties will prevent the solder joint from wearing out prematurely. If the wires are constantly moving back and forth, uh, the wires will start to fray. I can put up a picture on screen what that looks like. So it is very important to do this step. So next up is installing the ground cable. That's the black one labeled ground. I'm going to be using this bolt here and uh, I'm going to be crimping on this butt style connector and using that. So let's go. So I also added some shrink wrap to this cable to protect it against the rough edges. So this should last a very long time. So the final cable to install is the 12 volt feed. Here I'm gonna be using the OBD2 port which has a constant 12 volt feed. So here is the OBD2 port. It is held on with some plastic tabs on the sides. So to remove it simply press on these tabs and the port should pop inwards. Then you can sneak in and access the wiring from behind. So the cable that we are interested in is this yellow one. That is the one that is always on. So we will be splicing just into that. So a really nice way to splice into this cable is to strip off some insulation and separate the two halves and make it sort of a needle thing. And then you can just thread the new wire through this and then solder it and that will create an extremely stable connection. So the final step here is to just use some more zip ties and attach this um, 12 volt feed here above uh, just so it doesn't chafe on anything. I won't show you this because it's gonna be so hard to film this while doing but you get it it's just zip ties. So yeah I'll do that. So now with all the wiring done you should have uh, something that looks like this sticking up of your cup holder area. And the final step is to mount the can bridge. I usually place it just here under this bar and zip tie it tightly onto the frame. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. I'm using some double sided tape on top of the can bridge to make it stick better. And voila, we are done. Canbridge is installed. Now just to reinstall the cup holder. Okay, so I have uh, reinstalled the panels and uh, now it is time for the first startup with the Canbridge. Nice. The Canbridge install was successful and also the battery upgrade was successful. This 
old leaf now has quite the respectable range. Nice. So I hope you liked this video and learned something as well. Now you should be confident enough to go about installing a can bridge on your own vehicle. Until next time!